By the way, thank you so much for designing this t-shirt for me. Thank you. All right? So this right here, you will remind me that you know I'm staying strong. We can kick calculus in its head. Okay? Now, number 15. This is a tough one. I still put it here. I really don't know why. Maybe I should change it, but it's it's too late now. 1 over x cubed plus 1. Yes, you are seeing this right. Integrating 1 over x cubed plus 1. Yes, we have to factor the denominator and we have to do some partial fraction, the dirty work, right? When you factor the denominator, you are going to get x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. So, let's see. Perhaps I'll put the final answer right here. So, I will do the partial fraction right here in blue for you guys. First of all, I will just be writing this down as 1 over x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. We have two factors. The first one is linear, so I'm going to say this is equal to some constant a over that denominator, which is x plus 1, and then the other one I'll just say plus. This guy is an irreducible quadratic. Therefore, on the top, we have to set a linear. In another word, we have to put down bx plus c. All right, A, it's easy to figure out because we can do the cover up method. I'm going to go to the original denominator, cover this up, and I will ask myself, what do I need to put in to make this zero? I need to put in x equal negative 1. Put in negative 1, negative 1 here. Check this out. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative, negative 1 is another 1, so 2, and then plus 1 is 3. So, yeah, that's it, <laughs> one third. A is equal to positive one third. That is very nice. And we also have to figure out the B and then C. Well, the deal is that we can just plug in whatever X values that we want now. But let me just make a note. We used X being negative one to figure out A, so we cannot use negative one anymore. But we can now use, let's say X is equal to zero. We're gonna do this in your head, okay? When you're putting X equal to zero, this right here, we cannot cover anything up, so you put x equal to 0 for all the x. On the left-hand side, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, 1 over 1 times 1, so you have 1. And on the right-hand side, this is 0, so 1 third divided by 0, so you have 1 third. Well, the beauty of putting 0 is that, you see, b times x, in another word, b times 0, this is gone. So this is gone. So 0, 0, so it's 1 on the bottom, so you get plus c. That's what we have. In another word, you see that c is equal to minus the one third on both sides. You get positive two thirds for that. So that's very nice. Okay? And to figure out b, well, we use zero and negative one already. Let's pick another easy number. Let's say positive one. Why not, right? So now I will just say use x equal one. Plugging 1 into all the x, not cover anything up, okay? So you get 1 over, let's see, do this carefully. 1 plus 1 is 2. Yes, you heard me right. 1 plus 1 is 2, I say that. Anyway, putting 1 in here, 1 squared is 1, minus 1 is 0, and you have just 1, so you have that. So it's pretty much 1 over 2 on the left-hand side. Still not that bad. Now, putting 1 in here, you have 1 over 3 divided by 2. In another way, you have 1 over 6. Putting 1 in here, so you have b on the top. And then you have plus c is 2 third over. And then if you're putting 1 in here, 1 minus 1 is 0. So you have over 1. So in another word, this doesn't matter. So you just have this. And then you can just solve this little equation now. That should remind you of the good old algebra days. You can just solve this and you get everything right. That's the whole question, right? Okay, let's see. What can we do? We have to do fractions. Multiply this by 2, multiply this by 2, so you get 4 over 6, right? So altogether, this is 5 over 6 plus b. And on the left hand side, of course, this is 3 over 6 minus 5 over 6 on both sides. b is equal to negative. 2 over 6, in another word, word negative 1 third. So, b is negative 1 third, like that. Okay? 
Anyway, that's the partial fraction part, and I'm going to erase this, and I will be looking at the integral now. So, we'll see, we will have to integrate the following. This right here is the same as integrating this and that, so I will just write this down right here for you guys. Integrating one third, let's just put that down right here in the front, and then we have the 1 over x plus 1, like this, and then let's close this integral, why not? And then for the second one, I will just write it as plus, and in fact, I will just keep them as how they are. So perhaps I will write down, we have the... Well, both of them have the third. I can factor that out, right? So perhaps I'll factor that out. And I have to do this carefully because I've been doing like 15 integrals already. So we'll see. It's not that bad. Thank God I didn't put this until like a 95th integral. Otherwise, I don't know what will happen. Anyway, integrating. I put a negative one third in the front, okay? I factor out the negative. So the B right here is, this right here is just going to be X. And then this right here is going to be a minus because I factor out negative, so it's going to be a 2. And then the bottom will stay the same. X squared minus X plus 1. Like that, right? Oh, I should put this down in blue. Let me just do it real quick. X minus 2 over X squared minus X plus 1. Okay, we are going to look at this slightly more carefully. Notice, I will just put this down for you guys. That was easy, by the way. So look at this. Notice, if you differentiate, if you differentiate x squared minus x plus 1, you get 2x minus 1. On the top, I don't have 2x minus 1, fortunately. I have x minus 2. I'm going to somehow manufacture the 2x minus 1 to help us out, and this is how we can do it. I will do this. I should have put this down in black. Let me actually put this down in black. Sorry. Yeah. Again, x minus 2 over x squared minus x plus 1. This is serious now. I want to have a 2x minus 1 on the top to help me out. This is how. Well, I'm going to multiply the top by 2. Of course, if I do that, change the whole thing. It's okay, I can just divide the 2 in the front, like that. So that's still the jet. And if you look at this right here, it's going to be 2x minus 4, right? But I want to see a 2x minus 1. So it's okay though, we can just look at this as 2x minus 1, and then minus 3, like that. And there's the reason why I want to do this. So, let's see, I'm not going to integrate this yet, I'm just going to write this down again and then I will do all the integration at the very end. The first one stays the same, and then the next one will have minus, or you multiply, you get 1 over 6, integral, I'll put parentheses. Here's the deal. I will pair this with this denominator, which is 2x minus 1 over x squared minus x plus 1, and I'll close that, and then I am going to minus, this is still minus inside, okay, so I'm going to minus the integral, 3 over, here's the deal. In order for me to do this, I will have to complete the square for that. So, let's see, what's this? Complete the square for this. I wish to have minus 2, right? So, I will have to minus 2 here, I mean minus another x here, and then plus x. What did I say? No, 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 I cannot do that. That's the fourth power situation. Okay, here's the deal. x squared minus x. To complete the square right here, I look at half of the yeah, I look at half of the coefficient of x, which is negative one, and half of that is negative one half. You are going to square that, and that's the magic number. So I will look at this as plus one over four, right? But originally I have one, so I need plus three over four, and as I said, this and that is still the same and this, this, that, will give us a perfect square. And the perfect square is going to be x minus one-half square, like that, okay? And perhaps I'll erase this right here now, because I don't need it. And 
right here we have plus 3 over 4 and this is what I will do I will say plus I need to look at this in the 1 over like x u squared plus a squared so you can put a 3 in the front so I'm going to look at the 3 over 4 as square root of 3 square but we we'll also have the denominator so let's put on this over 2 and then we'll have that being square like that dx Whew. Yeah. Okay, finally, let's integrate. This right here, easy. One third, natural log, absolute value, x plus one. Done. Okay, done. Write this down better. Okay, minus one over six times this. And the beauty of this is that the derivative of the bottom is exactly on the top. So this right here will give us precisely natural log of the denominator, which is x squared minus x plus 1. And the truth is, if you see the denominator, which you can complete the square right here, you are always going to get positive. So in other words, you can just put on parentheses for this. And I put 1 over 6 times this already, so we are good. Now, negative times negative will give us positive. And then 3 over 6 is 1 half, okay? So this is a 3 over 6. That's how we get a 1 half, okay? And of course, negative times negative positive. Here is a small trouble part. You are going to end up with the inverse tangent part. So you are going to do the reciprocal of this first. Namely, you multiply it by 2 over square root of 3, and then the inverse tangent. And the input is going to be this as your u. And thank God, the derivative of this is just going to be 1, so that's good. So you put this down, which is x minus 1 half. And then you divide it by this guy, which is the square root of 3 over 2, like this. That's pretty much it. But I will simplify this a little bit for you guys. Right? So we have just 1 over square root of 3 right here. So I will just write this down again. Here we have it. 1 third natural log absolute value of x plus 1 minus 1 over 6 natural log parentheses x squared minus x plus 1. This right here plus 1 over square root of 3, like this. Okay, so let's just write it down like this, okay? Inverse tangent, and I'll put this as the reciprocal, namely 2 over square root of 3. We're okay with this, and then I'm not going to distribute it. Please don't make me distribute this. <sighs> you can, but nah, let's just do it. So you have this times x, right? So you have this times x, you have the 2 over square root of 3 times x, and then the 2 and that 2 will cancel each other out. So you will have minus 1 over square root of 3, like that. Yes, I think this is correct. <sighs> All right, well done. Don't forget to put a plus C. If you don't put a plus C, that will suck. So don't forget to do that. Don't forget to do that.